precious It's all about your time It's all about the things you've become in your life You know the stuff you're made of You know you're on your way You know you've got Happy New Year to you, our viewers out there. Thank God it's 2023 and we promise it's going to be awesome for us. Today in our program, Women's World, we shall be talking about women in politics and how women can be part of the coming general elections positively. I am Faith Abdugafai, your host, and before we introduce our guests on the set, let's quickly go for a short break. We'll be right back. My people, election don't come again, oh. No. Now it makes stand up for women's society. They talk say this time make we go tanda, choose who we want, make it carry our country matter forward, make we shine our eyes well, well, choose better person for better future. Make we don't sell our vote, give any person, no matter what in them go tell us. Make we no say your vote now four years, sometimes now eight years. Your vote now your future. Your vote now your weapon. No carry knife, machete, gun, or any kind of wuru thing. Go the election. Make you for no go die. On top of another person matter. Remember, say your papa, mama, wife, and Pekin. They wait. Make you vote. Come back house. Make we shun violence for this 2023 election. Election now with civil rights. Make we do and peacefully this better message now from stand up for women's society welcome back to discuss what it takes to be a woman politician with all issues involved she is a woman of substance a role model to money a wife and a mother she is the founder of amazon for peace initiative she is Hajia Nana Asha Abu Ali. Please join me to welcome her. Good day, ma, and Happy New Year, ma. Happy New Year to you too, and Happy New Year to all our viewers. Ma, tell us more about you. I'm Her Excellency Hajia Nana Aisha Abu Ali, wife of the former military governor of Bauchi State. Now, His Royal Majesty, the Israel Passenger Kingdom. Wow. Welcome to our program. Ma, we would like to know, are you a politician? No, I am a politician to a very large extent. Yeah. I joined politics in the year 2003. Mm. And I rose to become the coordinator of the Buhari organization 2003 to 2007. After that, I moved to Bremen KB, where I was appointed as a special advisor to the government on women development. And I also was the project manager of the wife of the then KB state governor, Ajazin Biaradua Dakingari. I was the project manager of our NGO, which is the Zada Foundation for women empowerment. Wow. So I've been in and out of politics and I'm still back into politics. Wow, kudos to you, man. What is your motivating strength, both in politics, at home, and otherwise, man? My motivating strength is um, to see that Nigeria gets it right. That is why I keep on pushing. If not, it's not an easy terrain for a woman. Hmm. To be, as a woman in Nigeria, you have to really slog it out with the men who are not really yet willing to give us a chance. After studying in the U.S. A, studying in the U.K., studying in uh, Yugoslavia, former Republic of Macedonia, Macedonia, former Republic of uh, Yugoslavia, 
I think with all that I have seen, I should be able to come and make an impact in my country. I moved into Kogi State from Abuja to be able to make a difference. But it's not that easy. I'm still battling it out. Now I think I'm ready to soon go back into full politicking. Okay. Because that is the only way you can make a difference. I was, uh, when I came back to Nigeria, my first place of call was where I served for NYFC, which is Bakoda Textiles, because I studied textile technology and then also went into applied design, which comprises of interior and exterior de designs, landscaping, etc. After that, I worked with Kaduna Textiles, where I grew to become the assistant marketing manager and head of product development. We need Nigeria needs to go a long Nigeria still has a long way to go. And I think and pray that I become a part of it. I have a passion for tourism. That is my main reason for coming back into Kogi State. For coming into Kogi State. Kogi is blessed with a lot of tourism sites. But it requires somebody with a vision mm. to develop it. I'm quite willing and I have offered myself severally to do that. That opportunity is yet to come. You talked about you being a politician. So as a woman, what are your advice to women out there who are politicians and, who, and those that dislike politics? What will you be telling them now? For the women that are already into politics, I'll advise that the first thing you should do is to comport yourself. It's a terrain for men, but you have to slug it out. And in the process of slugging it out with the men, don't allow yourself to be abused. Because that is the worst thing you can do to yourself. I call it self-abuse. When you allow men to abuse you, you are abusing yourself. And one thing I want the women to know is that we, men talk more than women. Whatever you do with them, don't think it's concerned, it's out there in the open. Hmm. So my advice is, carry yourself with dignity and respect. You get respect if you respect yourself. For the women that are afraid to join politics for one reason or the other, mostly because the men, the husbands, are afraid of releasing their wives. And I don't blame them. It's the way we comport and carry ourselves. You have to make your husband believe in you. Let, give, let him have a trust in you that when you go out there, you will not think only of yourself, but of your home and your children. The legacies you leave out there, not only lives after you, it lives after your children also. So you have to be very conscious wow. of all of that. Being a politician as a woman does not mean for you to get a position, you have to disrespect yourself. If that position will not come to you without you abusing yourself, then it's not worth it. Thank you so much, man. We're still on the question on politics. Some, some, some people think women in politics are not responsible. So, ma, what is your view or what did you have to say about this statement, ma? That's exactly what I said about the self-abuse. Right. Some women have made, especially the younger ones, to believe that for you to become somebody as a politician, you need to sleep around with men. That is a very, very, very wrong notion and a very wrong example to set. Like I said, no position is worth 
you disrespecting yourself. If I cannot get it without disrespecting myself, then that position is not right for me. Mm. That is my principle. Because I want to be able to walk tall with my head held high and my children to be respected wherever they go. I cannot leave a bad name for my children. I'm where I am today because uh, I think I will not undermine myself. I have refused to do that. And some we, some people think being, uh, should I say beautiful, is an excuse for you to abuse yourself. No. It is a blessing from God. And you should respect God for giving you that. And no woman is even ugly. Every woman, every person, everybody is beautiful in their own respective way. Some are external, some are internal. And if you have the two, good for you. As politician, how did you balance your home and politics without your home being crushed? That's a beautiful question. First of all, you need to discuss it with your husband. Okay. At first it's not going to be easy because no man will agree for you to just go out there and search for your own good. I believe my parents did well in putting me in the best of schools and I also did well for myself going through schools. I went to the, I'm an alumna of the University of Minnesota in the United States. I'm also an alumni of Skopje University. Hmm. In Skopje, Kudos to you, Ma. I'm an alumni of the Professional Management College UK. So I don't think after going through all of that, I just want to sit at home. You discuss with your husband, find a level ground where you cannot meet the level ground or find the level ground immediately. You keep cajoling, but make him understand that all of that should not go to waste. Thank you so much. We go on a short break. We'll soon be back. Don't go away. My people, election don't come again. No. Now it make stand up for women's society. They talk say this time make we go stand up. Choose who we want. Make it carry our country matter forward. Make we shine our eyes well well. Choose better person for better future. Make we don't sell our vote. Give any person, no matter what in them, go tell us. Make we know say your vote now four years. Sometimes now eight years. Your vote now your future. Your vote. Now your weapon, no carry knife, machete, gun, or any kind of wuru thing. Go the election, make you for no go die. On top of another person matter. Remember, say your papa, mama, wife, and picking. They wait, make you vote. Come back house. Make we shun violence for this 2023 election. Election now with civil rights. Make we do one peacefully. This better message now from Stand Up for Women's Society. Welcome back. If you are just joining us, this is Women's World, a program designed to celebrate women that one way or the other impacts their world positively with their services and ideas. And our guest with us here is Honorable Hajia Nana Aisha Abu. Thank you for staying with us, Ma. So, now it's time for general election and election is in february what is your advice for women generally not just in kogi states but nigeria at large man you know elections are supposed to be about the give and take of political ideas but recently it's been about 
going out and getting a large market share. I believe that Nigeria is not in the auction block and it's not for sale. So I advise women not to allow themselves to be carried away by politicians trying to buy them or buy their votes. Rather, think about the future of your children. Wow. Think about the future of nature. Yes, money is good, but for how long? When it is time for elections, politicians will definitely go out and try to buy a large market share, giving you salt, giving you maggi, and giving your children 500 naira. Some of your children, our youths, are being pushed to go into violence. I advise women, talk to your children, talk to your words. And I keep telling the youths and mothers, if any politician or any candidate or aspirant gives you money and gun to go out there and commit havoc on election day, ask that politician, do you have children? <laughs> Where are your children? Okay. Let them come from Line, in, line up in front and we follow them. Right now, most of them, their children are schooling of God. Or they've even moved their children outside. Then after election, when they go into the office, you are not even allowed near their offices. And their children drive heavy vehicles <laughs> oppressing you about. I am a politician. I advise that you go out there and vote right. I am a member of the APC and my candidate is Tino. Because I have seen what he has done and what I believe he will do. It's time for a rebirth, a renewed hope for Nigeria. And that is what Tino Bushi We've seen the antecedents of all the others. I will not mention any candidate's name. I can only mention my own candidate's name and tell you what is right about him and why you should vote for him. The people of Lagos have a lot to say about him and the people of the Northeast have a lot to say about Shetima. Those are good examples that will lift Nigeria. Oh, thank you so much, ma'am. In Kogi State, the INEC shows many women and men are not yet to collect a PVC, ma. So, what do you think is the causes of this? And what could you be telling them? Um, I think one of the reasons why people have not gone out there to collect their PVCs is lack of advocacy okay. on the part of INEC. It is not just when elections are coming or getting close that you begin to announce in the papers on television. It should commence immediately after the election so that you start preparing for the next election. But we still have time with a lot of advocacy and uh, going out to the communities, to the rural areas, because that is where most of the problem is. I think there will be a lot of changes. My organization, the Amazons for Peace Initiative for Tinubu Shetima 2023, which is an approved support group of the APC by His Excellency Haji Abdullah Adam, the chairman of APC. He's also doing a lot in that area. Okay. We've been doing 
some house to house campaign telling people about the need for them to have their PVCs and the need for them to go out and mass and fruit because we need to have a renewed Nigeria and with a renewed hope. And that is the only way we can do that. Your PVC is your weapon. Okay. It is not the gun, but your PVC. That is how to get in your candidate. So go out there, collect your PVC. If you don't know where to go, find out from your leader in your community and they will direct you. Go to your polling unit, go to the INEC office and inquire. The nearest INEC office to Go there and find out and get your PVC. You need it to vote. The next question on my list is that do you think your party APC can match? Or what is your assurance that the APC is going to win if you are to talk about security, empowerment and infrastructure across Nigeria? What are your assurance, ma? I believe my party is definitely going to win. Okay. There is a lot that has gone on. President Muhammad Buhari has done a lot, even as we have some security challenges. But before the government of the APC, was there no security challenge? And are we not seeing some improvement? Security challenges are bound all over the world. When you go to the United States, you find a lot of kidnapping. It did not start today. You find a lot of armed robbery. There's terrorism everywhere in the world. We are not saying that it is a good thing, but we are trying our best to ensure that it's reduced to the barest minimum, which is what we are seeing today. In Kogi State, for example, I have a governor whom I'm very proud of, His Excellency Alhaji Ayahadu Isabel, who believes in the securing of lives and properties. Because when a place is not secured, there is no way you can have development. He has done so much in that area. And then, when you talk about development in infrastructure, I think the recent commissioning has opened a lot of people's eyes to what Yayabello stands for. Yayabello is somebody that believes in his people and he is speaking and doing on behalf of APC. He has shown that he is a silent achiever. It's not when you make noise or go and stand on the road Commission a one-mile road that you are making an impact. We can see from the reference hospital, Okini, where even the president commented and was shocked. He was overwhelmed by what he saw. And he said he forgot where he was. He thought he was in Apapa or Abuja. But he was reminded that he is in Okini in Koki State. I don't think there's any hospital in Nigeria right now that is that equipped, nor that beautiful. And not only that, His Excellency has given access to the vulnerable. When you see that hospital, you think it is only for the rich and mighty in the society. I am a permanent member on the board of Bogi State Health Insurance Agency. And I'm telling you, giving you real facts, that hospital is part of the approved hospitals that will be accessed by the vulnerable in the society. If you fill in the forms 
and you put in reference hospital as a vulnerable person, be rest assured that all the treatment, all the facility in that hospital will be assessed by you. And not only that, he has upgraded all the zonal hospitals and some of the local government hospitals. And we have free access to for the vulnerable, not just to those hospitals, but also to private hospitals. Tell me, which government has done that? Have you heard of such? I don't think so. Health is wealth. Yayabello yeah, believes in that adage. And that is why he is ensuring that the people of Koki State access good roads, access hospitals, regardless of your status. Look at the schools. Those are what APC is all about. Giving back to the people that elected you into office. Yayabelo is a typical example of what APC is all about. Go to Kaduna State. Erufa is doing the same thing. Go to all the states that we have APC governors. There is something to show for it. But I'm mostly proud of my governor, who has been so silent until now with all his legacy projects. He's leaving his signature that will pass through the test of times. None of his projects are projects that will go after him. They are projects that will remain after 2024. And we pray that whoever comes in after Yahweh consolidates his achievements. So, with all that said and done, I am assuring you that APC is the party to vote for because APC has the interests of the people of Nigeria at heart. Even as we have cases of uh, uh, lack of security in the north, in the, uh, the east. Are we not seeing things coming up? President Muhammad Bukhari has ensured that the bridge is working. He has ensured that Niger Delta now has its own full chairman, in the person of Loretta Onechi, who is a very, very strong woman and very hardworking. She is a strong example of women doing us proud. Okay, ma'am, thank you so much, ma'am. You have spoken well. So, talking about the reference hospital, tell our viewers of what impact do you think the hospital will have on Nigeria and Kogi? The greatest impact it is going to have on Nigeria is that medical tourism will be caught. Okay. Unless a particular officer, government official, leader, anybody, wants to be wasteful, taking us for granted, then there will be no need for you to go abroad seeking for medical help. Medical help is here, right here in Nigeria and in Okini. One, Some of the equipment that are there can only be found in a few countries. There is an equipment there that we have only five of them in Nigeria. In the world, I mean. Okay. Two in Africa. Kogi. Okini is the second in the world in the whole of Africa to have it. So, once again, I 
I say on behalf of my people of Kogi State, we call ourselves Kogais, the Nigerians. Thank you, Governor Yaya Bello. I want you to also zero this to your state in Kogi State. This time next year, we'll be having governorship, primary, and election. What do you think APC will do? Or are they going to still emerge as governor? I believe we will emerge if we produce the right candidate. The next election, not just that of 2024 for Kogi State, but the one of 2023 for the president, is going to be the most brutal in the history of Nigeria. Who emerges as the president is going to determine what will happen in Nigeria in the next 20 to 50 years. Okay. Same thing with Kogi State. We have other parties. We have to be very, very careful um, in whom we present our party ticket to. Because the constitution is going to be very stiff for 2024 gubernatorial. We must be very, very careful in the selection by allowing the people's voice to be heard through the ballot box. The primaries determines who is going to be the next governor. I advise us to do a real conference table meeting with those sentiments to pick who we are going to present as our candidate or as our aspect. What are your advice or your message for Kogi youths for governorship election? My advice for Kogi youths is I am going to speak to you as a mother. What I will not allow my own son Abu Bakr to do definitely I will not allow it is now for you to listen to me and understand my language. Youths, listen to your mother. Do not be cajoled nor deceived into causing any disruption. Do not be used to cause commotion. At the end of the day, you will be used and dumped. Be wise. Let your PVC speak for you. Let it speak you. Speak for you. Use it wisely. As a youth, you should be thinking about your future. The future of your state and the future of Nigeria. If you allow yourself to be bought, condemn yourself. Go out there but do not allow yourself to be used as a weapon of destruction. How many of you, of them, politicians that are vying, do you see their children out there? Shei, the son of the president, to be. Shei Tunubu is a good example for you. Have you ever seen Shei fighting? Have you ever seen Sheyu using abusive words? Tinubu has shown a good example by presenting his son. His daughter, Falashade, is also out there conversing for votes for their father because they believe in him. They are not using any weapon to force anybody, they are begging you. 
to go out there and help converse for votes for their father, for the future of Nigeria. I also want to use the example of Muhammad Buhari for the 2019 election. Zara Buhari was out there. Yusuf Buhari was out there. Those are the kind of leaders that we want. Aisha Buhari was out there. And now you can also see that Remy Tinubu is out there. Nana Shetima is out there. They are not just starting now that election is remaining about 40 days. They started from the beginning, the moment their husbands got the tickets for the party. They backed them up by coming. There is no place that we go, because I'm on the PCCW team. There is no place that we go to that you don't see those women. So it encourages us to join them. But where your wife is sleeping at home and you expect me to join the train, no matter how dangerous the terrain is, I go and your wife is sitting comfortably at home. Sorry, sir. I'm not following you. And I will not vote for you. But these people have shown to us that they have the interest of Nigeria at heart. That is why they are bringing their families. Not now, after I finish this interview, people will start bringing out their wives and their children. <sighs> a belated action. We know who means well for us. Those who are ready to sacrifice for Nigeria with their children, those are the people we follow. I believe strongly in my candidacy, our candidacy of the APC. Youths, Follow who will also come out with their family. Thank that you. That means they believe in the struggle. But do not go violent for anybody. Thank you so much, man. At this point, I want you to tell our audience what they need to do during and after the election come 2023. Far so good. Thank you for remaining with us and listening. My advice for us on election day is to wake up very early. Be sure you eat before you go out there. No matter how early you are going, you should be there by around 7, 8 at the most. Eat before you leave home and queue. That is the only way you can exercise your right as a citizen of Nigeria. But comport yourself in a peaceful manner. Again, I go back to the youths because you are the ones that are being used. Go and queue and vote. Do not collect any gun. Do not collect even knife or stick for anybody. In fact, if anybody does that and asks you to go and do so, then ensure you tell all your mates not to vote for that candidate because when they come into office, a lot of mayhem will be losing up on the earth. And who are the first victims? You are the first victims. Shy away from violence. Embrace peace. Let us build a stronger Nigeria. We are out there to give you a renewed hope. A rebirth for Nigeria. So I say unto you again, vote 
APC vote Tinubu Shetty. I'll come back here again to tell you who to vote. <laughs> Thank you so much, Wa. <laughs> Thank you so much. On a final note, tell our viewers about MFC TV, not just telling them, uh, tell them to subscribe to our YouTube TV. MLC TV has come to stay. Why do I say so? I can see a lot of passion with not just the founder and proprietor, but with the staff, dedication and devotion. And I have been following your programs, and I must commend you. Thank because you, with ma. each passing second, I have noticed that the quality of your production is getting better. Wow. And it's still going to get better. Thank you, Suma. You'll be glad to know that as a student of applied design of the University of Minnesota, I did some courses wow. in cinematography. Wow. And I'm pleased with your work. Thank you so much, Ma. I am very pleased with your work. And I say to all our viewers out there, please subscribe so that you can empower MLC TV to keep bringing good quality products, good quality programs and news. Yes. Thank you so, so much, Ma. We're glad to have you on our program today. You have given us a word of encouragement. I hope to have you more on our program. We really appreciate you, Ma. I'm You're welcome, Ma. And thanks for the invite. Thank you so much, Ma. I'll be willing to be here at any time you deem it fit to come. Well, we have come to the end of the program, and that is much we can talk about on today's edition. Please join us this same hour on Sunday. Our YouTube channel, Malakai TV. Facebook, MLC TV. Also, you can watch our previous edition on all our social media handles, including Instagram, MLC TV 2021, Twitter at MSC One. I am Faith Abdul Ghaffar saying thank you and goodbye for now. It's all about your wishes.